And welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Wednesday, January 18th. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Domain. Many of the stories right here can also be found at our website at IndianCountryNews.com. And here are some of the news stories for the day from the Associated Press and other Native News sources. The Obama administration today rejected the Keystone XL pipeline after Republicans forced his hand by attaching the approval into legislation that cut payroll taxes to thousands of working families. The State Department, which holds the authority to approve the project, had announced last November that they wanted to delay a decision in order to study the environmental and other safety concerns raised by American Indian tribes and people along the six states it'll travel in and in Canada. Then last December, Republicans in Congress tried to force the president into making a decision within two months, tucking the mandate into the payroll tax cut that Obama wanted to sign into law over objections of the Tea Party faction of the House of Representatives. Obama said uh, the rush, an arbitrary deadline insisted on by congressional Republicans, prevented a full assessment about the health and safety of American people and recommended that the application permit then be denied. That's the status of that. January 17th saw the state of Wisconsin residents present well over twice as many petition signatures needed, nearly one million for the recall of Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker. 72 volunteers representing each county in the state carried the boxes to the Wisconsin Government Accountability Board Office, or GAB, in Madison, Wisconsin, including Paul Domain representing Surrey County and uh, Menominee County Volunteer and Local County Officer Diana Miller. journey through the high seas and thick ice, a Russian tanker and its crew are offloading more than a million gallons of fuel to an iced in city along the western coast of Alaska. Two parallel hoses 700 yards long each are stretched between the tanker Renda and a pipeline that will deliver 1.3 million gallons of fuel to storage tanks in the city of Nome. The offloading loading began with gasoline and then gasoline and diesel were both being transferred separately. Jason Evans, board chairman of the Sitnasak Native Corporation, the company that arranged for the fuel delivery, said the tanker's two hoses are pumping between 30,000 and 40,000 gallons of gasoline and diesel an hour. This is the first time that petroleum products have been delivered to a western Alaska community by sea in the winter, officials said. The transfer could take from 36 hours to five days. It started near sundown January 16th after crews laid the hoses along a stretch of a Bering Sea ice to the pipeline that begins on a rock causeway 550 yards from the tanker, according to Jason Evans, the board chairman of the Sitnasak Native Corporation. Mexicans are rushing aid to Terra Hamara communities in the remote northern mountains after a local official said dozens of the Indians had killed themselves because they couldn't feed their children due to severe cold weather. The Tarahamara have long been a symbol of fierce pride, strength, and self-reliance in Mexico. They are known for running multi-day marathon races across the mountains as part of a, their traditional celebrations. The idea that such a proud people might be losing their spirit stung Mexicans into a flurry of drives to collect food and clothing for the Indians. Health care and emergency workers in the region said January 16th that the mass suicide rumors are untrue, but that the reports of famine are real. The Mashpee Wampanoag have filed a complaint in tribal court in an attempt to recoup about $400,000 current tribal leaders say was embezzled by a trio of, of former tribal officials. 
Former Tribal Council Chairman Glenn Marshall, as well as two others, are named in the civil complaint filed last month in the newly established Tribal Court. Marshall is serving a federal prison sentence after pleading guilty in 2009 to bilking the tribe out of nearly $400,000 and using the money to make illegal campaign contributions and for personal expenses. The two other defendants were never charged, but the lawsuit says they conspired along with Marshall. On a bluff overlooking a sweep of California beach, scientists in 1976 unearthed what were among the oldest skeletal remains ever found in the Western Hemisphere. Researchers would come to, the, uh, to herald the bones dating back nearly 10,000 years as potential treasures trove for understanding the earliest human history of the continent of the United States. But a local tribe called the Kumeya Nation claimed that the bones uh, were their ancestors and demanded them back several years ago. For decades, uh, fights like this over human bones have played out across the nation, yet new federal protections could now mean that the vast majority of the remains of an estimated 160,000 Native American remains held by universities, museums, and federal agencies may soon be transferred to tribes. A new federal regulation addresses what should happen to any remains that cannot be positively traced to a specific modern-day tribe. Museums and agencies are required to notify the tribes in the area whose current or ancestral lands harbored the remains, then the tribe is entitled to have them back. The tribes have hailed the rule, saying it will help close a painful chapter that saw Native people's bones stolen by grave robbers, boxed up in dusty storerooms, and disrespected by researchers. Maybe we can get Grandma and Grandpa back. New signs will be going up on the part of the old Highway 61 known as the Mississippi Mound Trail Project. The Mound Trail Project is expected to raise awareness of numerous Native American mounds and earthworks along the Mississippi. The, drive, uh, the driving trail will include up to 30 selected mound areas that are visible from the road and clearly marked by signs with information about each location. The Soto Greenways coordinator, Larry Jarrett, told the Clarion Ledger the signs will be within a mile of the mounds. According to historians, the earliest major earthen mound construction began about 2,100 years ago and continued to be constructed for the next 1,800 years. Of the mounds that remain today, some were built to bury important members of those local tribal groups. And that's another roundup of news from Indian Country in this edition of the Native News Update. We want to thank you for joining with us and please come back again soon.